Now, I have fell in love with death because I've been playing a lot of Nubians, especially with the corset refresher, dropping some new Anubian cards. I just like the whole Egyptian feel and the interaction and synergy with all of the Anubians. And this set is bringing me so many toys to play with. I'm so excited for this. But we're going to start out with a big old boy. And this is a common 8-mana, the Beached Colossus. You know, he's just chilling out there on the beach. Just big old boy. Frontline, can attack. At the start of your turn, deal 5 damage to each god. So he can attack, but your opponent's going to have to get through this somehow, whether it be a spell, some type of board wipe, or just going right into it. But it has 14 attack and 11 health. And the longer this stays on the board, it puts a ticker on how long the game is going to last when both of you are taking 5 damage at the start of your turn. Landing and getting some support. I'm not too big on that card, but it is really interesting. Now we got four mana spell, reclaim, draw two cards, love drawing more cards than death, empower one, add a pharaoh's heirloom to your hand. Now as we keep reading through this, because I've already went through the death cards, I ain't gonna lie to you, you are gonna see a continuation of this trend of pharaoh's heirloom. And by the time we get done with it, there's going to be so many different combos with the pharaoh's heirloom it is going to be sickening <laughs> unless you're a death player <laughs> well now we got another six mana spell bifurcating curse pick one destroy each creature with an even mana cost or destroy each creature with an odd mana cost so a very interesting board wipe that can clear boards and also in your deck construction because it destroys creatures on both sides of the field, you might just only run even creatures so you can target all the odd creatures and not lose any of your own. Or maybe you build your deck with nothing but odd creatures. But adding some more dimensions to deck building uh, with that option. But I would say that will get some play possibly as it is almost Rapture Dance-esque in the way that it works where it could wipe a whole board but you know what is the chances that somebody has all even numbers or all odd numbers who knows another six mana spell on her command destroy enemy creature give plus two strength to each of your nubians with a cost one so you get to take out an enemy creature any enemy creature you choose and then give plus two strength to each of your nubians with the mana cost one so been able to buff those priestess of Takat, things like that yikes that's a very strong card and it's got bay neferu up there uh, where she should be on a pedestal <laughs> next we got the one mana wretched vanguard 2-1 another anubian frontline afterlife still one health from your opponent's god so that is a nightmare. That is an easy buff with on her command. Then we got three mana, four one, Chiroptic Himmervor. Roar, deal two damage to your opponent's god and heal your god for two health. Four one, Nether. So you get some direct damage to Frenzy, your Cursed Obelisk, or Scepters, or any of your other Frenzy triggers. And then you're going to also heal, and it being a nether, it's going to probably see it play in a lot of nether decks. Very cool card. And then this is probably my favorite card of the whole set. Five mana, five five Anubian, the big bony bastard. And boy is he a big bony bastard. Look at all these arms and swords, and he's got like an alligator face. I mean, this cool. This card is cool was probably the best name in the game well up there with dick puddle Coat. but anyway he has temp fate empower one add a pharaoh's heirloom to your hand the temp fate you can buff him more for five mana that's pretty strong but the pharaoh heirloom continues so now we got 
two mana vengeful serapite and power one destroy an enemy two mana creature three two anubian so a lot of value in this little guy for two mana you play him at three mana you know you'll be able to take out a two mana creature but even at two mana he's a three two anubian that can get buffed by all the anubian fun shenanigans two mana curse of greed destroy an enemy creature would cost three or less so that is almost essentially a blight bomb then you have empower one add a pharaoh's heirloom to your hand so at three mana it's a blight bomb and adds that pharaoh's heirloom and here it is the one mana pharaoh's heirloom and this is what it does and why it's going to be so crazy with all these cards that add the Pharaoh's heirloom to your hand. Summon a 2-1 Wretched Vanguard and Power 2 also summon a 2-2 Vile Reaver. So if you want to play it at 3 mana you can summon 2 pretty decent sized creatures or just summon the 1 Wretched Vanguard. But there's more to it than just that. As we move on, 3 mana, 3-3, three, three, Dark Sun Celebrant, another Anubian. After you summon a 1 mana creature, give it plus 1 health. Empower 1, would make it 4 mana, add a Pharaoh's Heirloom to your hand. For 7 mana, you add the Pharaoh's Heirloom to your hand, max it out, and summon the 2 other creatures that would gain the health from the Dark Sun Celebrant. So, even just at four mana playing these on the lowest version you're still getting a lot of value but at seven mana you can definitely get a game swing next we got a four mana three four return tomb guard another nubian i love it this set is pretty nubian themed anyway roar summon a random one mana nubian from your void very strong and power one add an heirloom to your hand so a whole lot of value, you get another heirloom, you're summoning on Roar, you grab, play this at 5 mana, you also are going to get the heirloom that you can then turn around and summon more creatures. So as you can see so far, we're getting a whole lot more population strategy into death, along with the already massive amount of population cards like Cursed Obelisk and the Necro Scepter and the current Anubians that all can do different types of things pulling from the void and whatnot so now we are moving into the rares we have the hand of the abyss two mana one two anubian roar pull a random one mana anubian from your void and power one add an heirloom to your hand next card just insane two mana packed fiend roar deal two damage to your god but this thing has six attack at two mana now it does only have one health and it costs you two damage. But if your opponent doesn't have any cards or no way to in their hand or no way to really kill this, then this thing could finish a game or it could just be a great distraction to put out. But it is a nether, so there is some ways to buff it and get some more health onto it and make it even stronger. Very crazy looking artwork there. Scary looking creature. So, next we got 3 mana, 3-3 three, three, Scorch Seeker, of course another Anubian, Tempt Fate, Roar, target a creature, give it minus 1 health if it's an enemy, otherwise give it plus 1 strength. So, a lot of value here, where you can possibly buff the Scorch Seeker with the Tempt Fate, and either minus 1 health from one of your opponents, or buff another one of your creatures. So I do like that card quite a bit. And then we have a Relic, the Beacon of the Damned. Three mana, no attack, no strength, and only one durability. If there are at least four one mana Nubians in your void at the end of your turn, randomly summon one of them. So it doesn't cost anything to your durability. So this can stay on until your opponent takes it off or you, tra or you take it off. So if you've got a ton of Anubians in your void, this thing could stay on and keep summoning those one mana Anubians that you can continue to buff. Alright, so now we've got the Dead King's Touch. 
four mana, destroy a creature with six health or less, very strong board wipe, and power one, add the heirloom to your hand, so five mana, and you can take out a whole lot of different creatures that your opponent could possibly have because six health's pretty high, stay under, and then you're continuing on with the heirloom shenanigans. And here we have Hope Lost, three mana, give minus one, minus one to each creature in your opponent's hand. If this would set itself to zero or less, obliterate that card. So not only if you hit a one mana cre or one health creature in their hand, and if it hits zero, it dies, it gets obliterated. It's no longer in the game for them to try to get back or use. So that can be pretty strong. And then we've got the Bone Roller, which is a very interesting Anubian to me, especially the artwork. <laughs> it's just a skeleton. He's just in a wheel, just rolling around the desert, having a good old time. So four mana, three, three, Anubian Roar, Tempt Fate, and apply the result to each of your creatures. You can possibly pull off some crazy buff turns with the Bone Roller playing it with a full board of creatures. Now we got a two mana spell, reach into the black, summon three random one mana Anubians from your void, and power one, add the heirloom. So for two mana, you're just automatically gonna get three Anubians from your void summoned to the board. Super stupid, especially, you know, with combo just with the bone roller alone at six mana, would be pretty wild but if you're at seven mana you can add that heirloom next we got four three two anubian heirloom retriever deadly tempt fate afterlife add a heirloom to your hand four mana deadly with that tempt faith which could be more buff you know that's a lot of utility a lot of value in the heirloom retriever definitely like that anubian probably going to be a one of type of card but maybe a two of in some decks but next we're going to dip back into some atlantean action six mana salvaging archive regen one roar deal five damage to this creature so kind of weird but it's a seven eight at six mana so when you play it it's going to have three health, but it has regen one, so it could get back up to that eight health uh, pretty quickly, I would say. But I don't play a lot of Atlantean, so I I'm not real sure. I don't like creatures that tend to hurt themselves, but with the regen one, it could make up for it. Now the Vile Reaver, this is a nasty guy. One mana, two two Anubian, Blitz, burn one. So you're not going to have him for very long, but when you can summon this guy because he's only one mana 50 times a game with Blitz, that's just a ton of, a whole ton more of board wipe. And now we're moving on to the epics. Five mana, Lucky Devil, two, four. He is a nether, backline, tempt fate, once per turn, destroy an enemy creature after it attacks. Woo. If you have this guy, because he is backline, it's going to be hard for opponents to kill this guy in death because you're going to be able to either summon a whole bunch of Anubians to be in front of it or a bunch of zombies or a bunch of imps. So being able to destroy a creature once per turn after it attacks is really, really strong. Like this may get nerfed because that seems unbelievably strong but i love it we'll see how much play he gets in nether decks and then great artwork with this big scary little devil there and we've got another five mana spell a couple of them actually over the line each creature gains minus one minus one so that's all creatures on the board your creatures perform an extra attack on your opponent's god so if you have a full board of anubians that can survive that minus one minus one and still have some damage to do, they're going to get an extra attack that could possibly end the game right there because that's all going to be extra attack on your opponent's god, especially if your opponent has no boarded, limited board, which <laughs> with death is more than likely. 
So pretty nasty. And then, of course, the Land of the Dead we talked about. This was one of the first cards I was excited about that I showed. Select up to six one-mana Anubians from your void and summon them to the board. So pretty strong when you think about all the one-mana Anubians that could be into your void. And this also can be a Hail Mary late game to bring you back from losing a game. But now we're going to get into the legendaries. And oh boy, here's where it's going to get real nutty with the heirloom. So first we got four mana, four, four, Asenoth, Hand of the Pharaohs. Love that name. Crazy art. He's got, you know, multiple arms here. Huge compared to these little guys here. Backline. Love it. Ability, summon a one mana Anubian from your void and give it deadly. So you keep this guy on the board. Every turn you can summon a deadly Anubian. That's if you have it in your void. That's a one mana. Just, just incredible with the whole card pool. And then this guy here. The Quorum of Pharaoh's Past. And this is where those heirlooms, if you did not play those heirlooms and you've held them, can get insane. 7 mana, 7-7, seven, seven, Roar, deal 2 damage to a random enemy. So that is not just creature, that could be the god. Repeat this for each Pharaoh's heirloom in your void and your hand. That is one turn kill potential. If you haven't already destroyed your opponent to a bloody pulp, you play this with any amount of heirlooms around, that's probably going to be the end of the game. <laughs> This is just insane, incredible, and look at that artwork, beautiful. Uh, I believe that's Takat summoning three different Anubians there. And then, of course, we got this little guy we can't forget about. We covered him, the 1-1-1 one, 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 Samut Bear of Burdens. When this creature enters the board, give plus one strength to your other creatures, Anubian. Oh, and that guy, since he's a one-mana Anubian, can... Go fit in with all the other shenanigans and give cre all your other creatures plus one, plus one. Just a whole ton of fun for us deaf players. And sorry for everybody else who has to play us. But I'm ready to go and excited for the Nubians. Next video will be the Light God and then the War God. So... If you haven't yet subscribed, hit that notification bell so you'll be ready for when we go and take a look at the next two gods and the crazy cards of this Mortal Judgment set. And check out FrameWarFortune.com, sign up for free, and come join us in the Discord. Let me know your thoughts on the deception and death cards of Mortal Judgment and what you think is going to happen, what cards should be nerfed, are going to be nerfed and which ones you think should be buffed appreciate everybody joining me as always stay safe out there until next time this is war with the enemy think that it was meant to be living in a time where disease is on every screen i won't let them fester me i know most are festering negativity is a plague for the mentally